DC Comics are making all kinds of news because they're killing off the Justice League. The problem is nobody takes death in comics seriously anymore. And it turns out it's not just a reader problem. It's not just a retailer problem. It's actually a comic book like executive group editor problem. We did have that interview with Jordan White that Doc and I talked about yesterday, but he gave away a few more details. And the way that comic books just in general think about death in comic books and why it's so laughable, obviously here with me to talk about that, is the expert historian, the Marvel aficionado. Doc, how you doing? I am... <laughs> you know what? I am. I, I, I was dead, and then I came back. <laughs> <laughs> you were. This... There was some really illuminating stuff. We we talked about Jordan White really um, identifying how terribly is it editing, but this stuff about the resurrection and killing off characters, I, I got to get into it. There's two quotes I want to get into. First off, he says, when Matt Rosenberg, talking about his X-Men uh, reboot, started his run after X-Men disassembled, where things were going very dark and characters were dying, we did that with the full knowledge that we were about to resurrect them. We would not have killed that many characters if we didn't know for a fact they were going to come back a couple months later. So they did it, you know, as a ploy to spike numbers and say, this is an important issue. Characters are dying. But they knew the whole fucking time that the characters weren't going to be dead, that they were going to come back within a matter of months. That is, it's skeezy. You know what I mean, Doc? It's oh, lying. God, yeah. <clears throat> it is yeah. so, so dishonest. It, it really is. And you know what? Hey, do you remember the the actual there was actual little bit of hype behind Rosenberg's X Men run? Yes, starting because, out at X Men number eleven to seventeen, it was good. Yeah, because there was all kinds of stakes to it, and what what they're admitting here is that stakes. Well, you know, we might hurt somebody's feelings. We might hurt. We might kill somebody's favorite character so we can't do that we're just, no we're, we're never going to do that anymore that that's that's what they're doing um and, and it's bullshit you know what they did they sold us a fucking bill of goods and got us hyped up because they added stakes and like some like holy shit what's going on in x-men all these characters are dying this is and because they had every intention of just bringing it back look whenever they killed they specifically killed Gene at the end of the Dark Phoenix saga with abs with every intention of never bringing her back. She was dead, dead. And that's, you know what? In the 80s, in the 70s, when they would kill a character, they brought, they had no intention of bringing that character back. I mean, even Bucky, the only reason he came back is because somebody had a goddamn good reason for it and they just they stopped doing that i mean in, in fairness the x office stopped really making good reasons to bring characters back dead characters back a while ago um but now i guess they're what they're saying is well instead of actually getting back to a time when you'd have to have a really great reason to bring a dead character back Instead of actually doing our job as editors in telling creators no, we're just going to take that entirely off the table because I'm too much of a spineless fucking coward to tell Jonathan Hickman he can't bring back X character. No, no, but he's sitting here saying he, he was in agreement. He said we would not have killed off that many characters if we didn't know for a fact they were coming back months later. It's lying to people. And this is the reason that, that fans don't trust any of these publishers anymore. You can say someone's dying. I don't care. I don't believe you. That's why they have to go to more and more desperate, outlandish ways to, to sell comic books. They can't sell a Captain America comic book without an Alex Ross cover. No. You know, they have to do so many things. They can't sell a Spider-Gwen comic book without a J. Scott Campbell cover. If they want to get a headline now because no one gives a shit if they kill a character off because they've gone to this well so many times and it's completely meaningless, they have to do a race swap. They have to do a sexuality swap. They have to wholesale change the character just to get some publicity so people will come in and hate buy the comic book for two issues and they consider that a job well done as everyone exits out stage left because they can't take it anymore. Well, yeah. Um, look, they, they've been, it, it was a gimmick that they, they overplayed. Look, we, we can always 
I think there's one thing that we all can admit is that when the comic book industry has a gimmick that works and it sells comics, they will beat it to fucking death and killing characters or bringing them back. It was like reboots. They were very, very rare for a very long time. And now they happen every two fucking weeks. Um, you there can't was a get time, six- Doc, where DC Comics would do everything they could possible to not name a comic book, number a comic book, number one. Yeah. Like, well, technically, we've never done this comic book, but there were 47 issues featuring this character. So we're going to call this one 48 on the first issue. Yeah. Because we don't want anyone to think that this is a new this is a new character that doesn't have history and that they shouldn't invest in believe that the character is going to survive. They exactly. care less about that anymore. They 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 want you to think about the number one issue because it's the only thing that can bring people in anymore is the false hope that there's a chance potentially in 40 fucking years that this thing could instead of being worth four dollars it could be be worth a hundred dollars yeah yep that's the, the, the and they and they've reused that gimmick the same way they've reused death and resurrection um and they beat it to the point where it's no longer it doesn't work and unless you do it in wholesale and that's what they they got right They did get it right whenever they were doing it in Rosenberg's run. They were wholesale killing large swaths of X-Men off. And it was like, holy shit, this is an actual big deal. If it was just two characters, nobody gave a fuck. It it wasn't a big deal because they knew they were lying to you all along. I know. There's another quote I got to get to here, Doc. Yeah. Yeah, He kind of expands on it. He says, at one point we were going like, who are the big characters can, uh, we, it says, can we bring back? It should say, we can bring back. And the answer was like, not a lot. We already brought back all the ones that people were really clamoring for, which is part of the reason it was helpful to kill the characters again. It, it, this is... It's hey, disgusting. Well, It's an admission that they're one-trick fucking ponies. They don't have any other creative tool in their toolbox except for death, resurrection race swap gender swap new number one that's well it. the only other thing that they can do now and this is i from what i understand from the comic retailers i talk to is to sell the same comic book which will not be read to the same customer over and over again with the the, the ratio varies that's why dc's oh, yeah. doing it they weren't doing it in the past marvel's obviously been doing it for a long time drove you out as a as an x-men completionist with yep. their ratio variance and going uh, bigger and bigger and bigger as far as price on that but that's the only that's the only way that they can keep their bottom line from bottoming out and exposing themselves to the entire industry and D- disney and, and everyone else is by selling the same comic book which will never be open will never be enjoyed by anybody just with a different coat of paint yeah, it's pathetic. Yeah, <clears throat> they they have they have no intention. They have no expectation that most of those are going to get read. But so they got they got like five or six tools in their total arsenal. And do you know what the one tool that has kept comics going for eighty years that they don't have in their arsenal? Write an interesting fucking story and compelling continuity that that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That's they've the they've lost they... all their continuity, Doc. Nothing yeah. makes sense. You have the same character in four different books in four different places with four different voices. They could give two shits about the characters. They could give two shits about the stories. It's what can we gimmick this week to, to save our jobs and, compete, and to keep people from realizing and exposing us for the frauds that we are. But we can see through it. The Emperor's you know, new clothes are what they are. Yeah. And and at this point they're not even hiding it. No, like this I mean, dude's that, bragging about it. Yeah, the admission that oh yeah, we needed to kill these characters just so we had big deal characters to bring back. Holy fucking stupid, Batman! Like this is. Do you know how? Do you know why people were clamoring for the return of a character that was a big name that was dead? It was because they weren't they were dead for years. You tried to do it in four months and make us give a shit. Listen, they they fucking Jordan White <laughs> and uh, Gabriel were able to sell people on a reboot of Uncanny X Men, and then you know the X Men reboot happened what eight months later. 
Yeah, approximately. Yeah, we got. Uh, We've had three, three X Men reboots in less than than uh, thirty months. months, I believe. Yeah. No. We've oh had yeah, yeah. On Un- Un- X Men, then we had House of X Powers of Ten, which is a reboot, and then X Men Number One again. Yeah, and then X Men Number One again with generic Duggan. So <clears throat> look, they've been going to this well for so long, and now. Like they're, they're making, yet they still tried to, you know, the funny thing was even after they're like, oh yeah, death and resurrection doesn't matter. So what did they lead off X-Force with? Killing Xavier. And, Just, uh, and, and, and <clears throat> what are I twice or three times now? Yeah. I think he's yeah. been dead at least three times or two. I know he's been dead at least two times in the well, it certainly imply there was another Hicksman time. era. Well, yeah, there was that. there were other ones that we weren't shown. Um, but he was dead at least twice on panel in the Hicksman era, in the Krakoa era. And neither of them, you know, one was in X Force and one was in Inferno. And neither of them really fucking mattered. No, no one takes the Justice League being killed seriously. No one takes Charles Xavier being killed seriously. Let me guess. You're going to kill Wolverine next year. I don't care. Death is meaningless. Idiots like Jordan White, card-carrying member, president of the Legion of Doofuses at Marvel Comics, C.B. Sobolski, Tom Brevoort, and, and others have made it meaningless. They have, they have killed off the ability for people to trust them about anything. And that's why they have to do gimmick after gimmick just to to hide their enormous failings. But everyone can see it now. It, it's absolutely – it's insane that he would even go to a um, a comic book website and even talk like this and give these details out and expose himself for, for the fool that he is. Well, I mean, I think <clears> – I think your, your, your response here is kind of what he's going to use to justify their decision. Well, they say – you know, the readers say oh, death is meaningless. So why are we going to try to give it meaning? You know what, man? It, it's like instead of you, you instead well, of this, death isn't meaningless. Your word is meaningless. Well, yeah. Every time you tell me something, I know I can't trust it because there's exactly. something that you've already planned two weeks later. You know what I mean? To undermine and you, and it'll it. be forgotten. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, that's, I mean, we've seen it with events. Everything will be, nothing will ever be the same. And then everything is exactly the same, like literally a week later. And there's never any consequences for any of the events that happen. I mean, where's the fucking King in black fallout? Jesus Christ. Um, dark hold fallout. Um, all the other events, you know, war of the <laughs> realms fallout. Yeah, outlawed. War of the <laughs> outlawed. Um, what, what was the one that they just fucking did? The the shadow light. No, the shadow land was the one from years ago. Uh, the the daredevil one that's going on. Devil's raids. Yeah, oh. where the fuck's the fallout uh, from that? Where's the fallout from? I don't know any of the other seventy three. Oh, heroes reborn. Um, <laughs> d- none, none. There's hey, never you made any your point, Doc. But, this guy's a buffoon, and he he basically announces it to the world, basically yeah. on a on a on a monthly, if not weekly, basis now, and I yep. love it. Thank and, you and very you, much for your service, Jordan White. Yep. Instead of taking the opportunity to g- bring faith back to the readers by making death and making things matter, you decide to just go into this most cynical of us. And go all in and say, yeah, fuck it. Nothing matters. If you want more information on just how incompetent Jordan White is as a group editor of X-Men, Doc and I had this conversation. He was speaking about his editorial process. Let's just say there's a reason the X-Men suck right now. And Jordan White is the main reason. You got to watch this video. You, You won't believe it.